Hello, fifth graders. Welcome to lesson 3.10, Algebra, Patterns with Decimals. Please pause to write the lesson number and title in your notebook. Today's lesson objective is to identify, describe, and create numerical patterns with decimals. Please pause again to write the lesson objective in your notebook. Today's lesson has two vocabulary words. The two vocabulary words are sequence and term. Remember that these need to be written in your math notebook so that you can use your notes on the test. When we talk about numerical patterns, we call the list of numbers a sequence. So a sequence is a list of numbers set apart by commas, such as 1, 2, 5, 7. So it's the whole list together is called a sequence. Every single number inside that sequence is called a term. So each number, 3 is a term, 5 is a term, 7 is a term, of part of the same sequence. Please pause and write the lesson vocabulary in your notebook. Let's begin by reading the Unlock the Problem. It says, a state park rents canoes for guests to use at the lake. It costs $5 to rent a canoe for one hour, $6.75 for two hours, $8.50 for three hours, and $10.25 for four hours. If this pattern continues, how much should it cost Jason to rent a canoe for seven hours? So let's go ahead and underline our question. We want to know how much it would cost for Jason to rent a canoe for seven hours. We also know that it costs $5 to rent one canoe, sorry, $5 for one hour. And then each time we go up an hour, our price increases. So the, our vocabulary here tells us that our list of numbers is going to be called a sequence. It is our job to figure out the term for a number for how many hours it will be for seven hours. So to solve this problem, what we need to do is we need to look at what we know about the first four hours. When we look at the difference between $5 for one hour and $6.75 for two hours, I can see that we've increased by 1.75. If I wasn't sure how I got that number, I could subtract to figure it out. So if I have 6.75 minus $5, 5 minus 0 is 5, 7 minus 0 is 7, Bring down the decimal, 6 minus 5 is 1, so the change was 1.75. So this is my rule, is that I'm going to add 1.75. So then from 6.75 plus 1.75, so plus 1.75, so 6.75 plus 1.75. Five. Let's add and see and make sure we should get 850. So 5 plus 5 is 0. Carry the 1, that's 10. 7 plus 7 is 14, plus 1 is 15. Carry the 1. 6 plus 2 is 8. And drop our decimal, we got 850. Perfect. We're going to continue our pattern by adding another 1.75. And that gets us to 10.25. In order to continue this pattern, we need to continue adding this rule. Our rule is that we add 1.75 for every hour. So we have term number 1, 2, 3, and 4. We need to find 5, 6, and 7 so that we can answer the question about how much it will cost to rent a canoe for 7 hours. So let's start with the last term we know. We know 10.25, and we're going to add 1.75, because that's our rule. So 5 plus 5 is 10. 7 
plus 2 plus 1 is 10 as well. So 0, carry the 1. 0 plus 1 plus 1 is 2. And then we bring down the 1. So we get $12 even. So our next term is 12.00. Let's continue by adding another rule, 1.75. 0 plus 5 is 5. 0 plus 7 is 7. Bring down the decimal. 1 plus 2 is 3. And bring down the 1. So our next term is 13.75. And now we're going to continue our rule one more time and get to our number 7. So 1.75, 5 plus 5 is 10, so that's 0, carry the 1. 7 plus 7 is 14, plus 1 is 15, carry the 1. 3 plus 2 is 5, and then bring down the 1. So our last term in the sequence is 15.50. So in order for Jason to rent a canoe for seven hours, it would cost him $15.50. Let's continue our lesson with the example at the top of the next page. It says, we are going to write a rule for the pattern in the sequence and then find the unknown terms in the sequence. Step one says, look at the first few terms. So if we look at the first couple of terms, we can decide if our number is getting bigger or smaller, increasing or decreasing. Well, if we look, we went from 29.6 to 28.3. If we went from 29 to 28, then we are definitely decreasing. All right, our next step says, write a rule that describes the pattern. So we know if we are decreasing, that means that if we are looking at how, what happens if it increases, that would be addition. And we're not increasing. So that's, let's look at the next one. It says, what are we going to do if it decreases? That would be subtraction. Okay, now we need to figure out what is our rule. So if we take those two numbers to 29.6 and 28.3, in order to find out how they changed, we're going to subtract them. So 6 minus 3 is 3, and 9 minus 8 is 1, and 2 minus 2 is 0. So our rule was that we are going to subtract 1.3. Now our next step is to use that minus 1.3 to fill in the blanks above. So the last term that we knew was 25.7 and we're going to subtract 1.3. 7 minus 3 is 4. Bring down the decimal. 5 minus 1 is 4 and then bring down the 2. So our next number is 24.4. Let's continue on with our rule of minus 1.3 to find our next term. 4 minus 3 is 1. 4 minus 1 is 3. And bring down the 2. And don't forget the decimal. So now we have 23.1. We still have one more blank to fill in, so minus 1.3. Now we have to borrow because 1 minus 3 we can't do, so the 3 becomes a 2. Now we have 11. 11 minus 3 gives us 8. 2 minus 1 is 1 and bring down the 2. So we have 21.1. So those are filling in all of our blanks. Let's read the explain below. How do you know whether the rule for a sequence would involve addition or subtraction? Well, if we look up above at step two, it says if the number is increasing, we're going to add. 
So let's write increase means add and decrease means subtract. Great job so far, fifth graders. It's time for your lesson activity. This lesson activity has two parts. Step one says write a rule for the sequence. And then step two says find the unknown term. So we're filling in that blank. Remember that the way we do this is we look at two terms that are next to each other and we find the difference. So I could do 26.1 minus 23.8 to find out what the rule is, and then I need to continue that pattern to fill in the blank. This work should be done in your math notebook. Great job, fifth graders.